In the finale of At the Vets, Panda has a 14 centimeter cyst growing in her abdomen. The challenge for today's surgery is we don't know which organ is affected. Taco is rushed in because of something he ate. Oh, I want to eat string. And senior dog Princess has developed a suspicious growth on her chest. A lump at this area on a 13 year old dog is a bit worrying. For three months, On the Red Dot follows three vets as they care for our animals. So this is the expenses so far this month. At Atlas Vet, Dr. Chow Hao Ting is going over the accounts with his wife and business partner, Dr. Vivian Chan. We need to pay for the ultrasound machine, which is 20 plus thousand. How about the discounts that we've been giving? Uh, this month haven't even any yet. The discount is 2.5k. Mm. This month, I actually don't think we will be able to cover costs. Yeah. Three months in, when I sat down and calculated how much discounts I have given until then, that's when I realised you in trouble. When there is another urgent case where there's a stray animal that comes in that cannot afford the care, then we have to help them in terms of the medical bill. And I always tell myself that this will be the last one. But unfortunately, a few weeks later, there will be another case. So up to now, I still am struggling to how to say no. Dr. Chow was hoping his seven-month-old clinic would break even in about four years' time. But as expenses pile up, this timeline may no longer be possible. The inflation rate is going up like crazy. Yes. Cost of staff has gone up a lot as well compared to the historical Trend. average like, salary. So for example, even for manpower expense, it has increased by 10 to 30% this year. When a pet owner brings in a pet and as a veterinarian, we know how we can help this pet, but then the pet owner is unable to afford the treatment, and we have no choice but to turn the pet away. Around the world, that's actually well documented to be the biggest source of grief among vets and vet nurses, because you become helpless, where the sole thing you are trained to do, in the end, is something that you are unable to fulfill. So the biggest struggle is how do we charge a fair service, but at the same time, afford to pay out people better. It's okay. In a previous episode, we met Penyet, a stray cat that Dr. Chow operated on for free. Penyet had been found at the side of the road with a mangled leg. Penyet is here for uh, around three weeks already. We are trying to find a doctor. So far, the clinic has been covering the expenses for Penyet's care. Meanwhile, Another stray, 12-year-old Cloudy, has been brought into the clinic. Cloudy? Hello, can you come in? She lost her appetite around last week. Ah, it, okay. it was quite sudden. Okay. And she seemed to have been flu-like symptoms. I'm 19 this year, and I've been uh, taking care of community cats as a cat rescuer since 2020. And whenever Cloudy falls ill or something like that, then I help him to send to the vet and also do the fundraising on behalf of him. Kelly is one of our most regular customers. She brought 14 cats to us so far and she has spent like $10,000. So I do fundraising for the cat on social media, but since fundraising cannot cover the whole cost, I have spent about a thousand out of my own pocket. So I think the people around me don't really know how much I've spent on them. They might think that I'm just spending money on useless stuff. Yeah. Dr. Chai have a soft spot for community animals. His rates are already quite affordable, but he still gives um, a 10% discount for community animals. Four months in, that's when we had a clinic policy that 10% would be the cap for stray discount. But honestly speaking, 
after that we, we still had cases where we give more than 10% but then the people still get upset and like why is this still a thousand dollars for example the business must be able to sustain before we can help others um, so it's, it's something that I'm still trying hard to manage I guess we confirm FIV, FALV status oh. so okay. if it's really FIV positive then the flu can cause quite severe symptoms mm. Okie dokie, let's go. FALV is feline leukemia virus that can affect the bone marrow. FIV is feline immunodeficiency virus is the cat version of the HIV virus in humans. This blood test will tell Dr. Chow which condition Cloudy has. Both conditions weaken the immune system of cats making them more susceptible to diseases, including flu. Claudie was diagnosed with FIV at another clinic, um, but Kelly wanted us to repeat the test today uh, because different tests have different percentage of accuracy. If Claudie tests positive with FIV and FELV, even a typical flu can become fatal. Over at Happy Vet, Dr. Forrest is checking in on 13-year-old Golden Retriever, Princess, who is suffering from hip osteoarthritis. This is Princess. She really behaves and acts like a one Royal Highness Princess. So usually when we bring her to a normal clinic, she will refuse to go into the room to see the vet. So at a home environment, it will be much easier for her. I am her money printing machine. So, um, I do what she wants, <laughs> not the other way around. A mobile vet visit can cost more than triple the average price of consultations at a vet clinic. For us as house call practitioners, we are only limited to one or two clients within the hour. So, therefore, the increase in cost. So, Princess has mild to moderate hip osteoarthritis. Hip osteoarthritis is very common in older dogs, especially the larger breed ones. Hip osteoarthritis is a condition where the cartilage in the hip joints gradually wears out due to old age. Our aim for her at this point is to slow down further progression. At the same time, minimize the pain due to the inflammation of the osteoarthritis. Very good. So this is her joint injection, which she's going to get today. This joint injection is called Catrophen, and it's going to help her feel more comfortable. Princess needs to be given this injection every week for a month. That was very good. This reduces the inflammation of her joints and maintains her mobility. Being a golden retriever, she loves her food. The moment you drop something on the floor, they suck it up with a vacuum cleaner. Now the problem with her being overweight is, it is putting additional stress on her hips. Um, we are going to put her on a little diet, so vegetables and fruits are healthier, healthier treat alternatives than her meat jerkies. But today, Dr. Forrest is also reviewing something that has given Princess's owner cause for concern. So right here, there's a lump. Now, we know dogs like Princess are very prone to fatty lumps, especially when they're a little bit chubbier like she is. But today's lump felt just a tad bit harder than I would like it to, which could indicate another type of tumour. Dr. Forrest is reviewing a lump on the chest of Princess, a golden retriever. A lump at this area on a 13 year old dog is a bit worrying. It's an area of a lymph node. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that it's not an enlarged lymph node. An enlarged lymph node suggests that Princess could be suffering from cancer that has spread around her body. 
So we are going to do a fine needle aspirate to check the lump. Dr. Forrest will be analysing the samples in her van. So we're going to look under the microscope to make sure that this is hopefully nothing cancerous. There you go. Well done. See you next week, OK? Good girl. The results will take just a few hours. But before Dr. Forrest can analyse the samples, she receives an urgent call for another case. We're going to just use the antibiotic to help quicken the resolution of the diarrhoea. I'll get the medication and it over to you. OK, if three to five days still not better, you let me know, I'll do a health call. OK, thank you. OK, bye-bye. It is now about 3.40 in the afternoon. We'll get the medication sorted out. Then I'll have my lunch. Hello, Sanga Kari Pao. Huh? Uncle, eat it. One huh? ice kacang, one chendol. Thank you. Oh, that looks wonderful. In the nature of our work, it's so unpredictable. It's a blessing to be able to eat lunch sometimes. <laughs> we never know when a phone is going to ring again. So let's just enjoy this, this quiet time we have now. Back at Atlas Vet Clinic. The results for Claudie are out. She has FELV and FIV. It is common for a stray cat to have either FIV or FELV, but to have both FELV and FIV is very unlucky. Cat flu is usually easily treated, but then for Claudie's case, her immunity is compromised, and uh, in the worst case scenario, some cats can succumb and die from it. Cloudy is prescribed two weeks of flu medication and antibiotics to keep her symptoms under control. A cat with both FIV and FELV can still live a normal lifespan only if the pet owner is very diligent in monitoring for symptoms of any illness. We show everything to start medicine and we don't wait and see. Then there's a challenge where as a stray cat, then how do we monitor those symptoms? How do we know when Cloudy is sick? Knowing that Cloudy is FIV and FELV positive is quite shocking and devastating. I feel that if I don't take care of her properly, getting her the treatment that she needs, there might be no one else that would be able to do it. But thankfully, we did manage to fundraise some funds for her. Lah. Another rescued stray cat, one-year-old Panda, is revisiting Dr. Chow. Hi, Panda. Previously, Dr. Chow attended to a large cyst growing in her abdomen. Oh, yo, Panda, it's okay. Two weeks ago, Dr. Chow conducted a procedure to drain the fluids out from Panda's cyst. This is a common method to manage the growth of cysts. So a cyst is a water balloon that is filled with blood and other fluids inside the body. To identify the origin of the cyst, Samples of the fluids were also collected through a fine needle biopsy and sent to a lab. I adopted Panda, so I met her when I was doing some stray feeding at a forest area. In these few days, right, I realized her tummy start to get bloated again. When she start vomiting yellow liquid, then I bring her to the clinic. I'm very upset. Why such a young cat will get this type of uh, thing happening to her. The cyst keeps growing back. So if the cyst grows to a size that is too big, it will start to compress on the different organs like the stomach and the kidneys, and that will uh, affect the blood circulation and affect the health of these organs. As draining the cyst previously proved ineffective, Dr. Chow is opting to cut it out this time round. But the surgery will be a tricky one. Unfortunately, based on the lab report, we're still unable to identify the origin of the cyst. So the challenge for today's surgery is we don't know which organ is affected. Let's say if the cyst is connected to the kidney, it is very, very challenging or nearly impossible to cut off a portion of the kidney because the body needs the whole kidney to function. So we will need to find out on the spot and then we need to think fast on our feet. Mm. 
at Star's Vet Clinic, Dr. Jean is handling a peculiar case. Oh no, what's going on? Why do you eat string? I need to feel, okay? Let me just feel whether the intestines are bunched up. Okay, so you so Taco is a five-year-old domestic short hair cat. Uh, the owners discovered the string peeking out from the butt this morning. The biggest worry we have about Taco consuming a string is that it can anchor itself at one point in the intestine. Uh, with that, if the intestines try to push it out, it bunches up around the string that's stuck. Uh, this will cause damage to the intestines and can be life-threatening to the patient. What's going on? What's that in your butt? We need to do an ultrasound to find out if that's happening. If so, there might be a need for surgery. Let's rock. Okay, you can. Okay, I will need to get an nurse for me. It's okay. Hey, here, I'll get an nurse. Taco, I know you're really. It's okay, Taco. I know, I know. Let's measure the intestines. I promise you, you're almost done. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Okay. I think that's all we're going to get out of taco today. Mm, baby, not that bad. Is it that bad? Hmm? Okay, taco, let's go. Good boy. Okay, okay. okay let's bring this kid down. This is really not that bad already. The fact that we didn't really get scratched is fine. We do see uh, many uh, fierce animals regularly, so uh, they can be cats, they can be dogs. Most people who've worked long enough in the vet clinic have had an injury at one time or another. One of the more memorables is the one that bit into my finger joint. So that caused my finger to really swell up for a few days. If the string foreign body gets trapped in the intestines, the intestines will be bunching around this long linear object. At this stage, I don't see enough evidence of that. Uh, hopefully this poop will pass out with the string. We monitor the situation and if there is evidence that the intestines have grown bigger or if it's not moving, that might be an indication in that situation to do surgery. Back at Atlas Vet Clinic, Dr. Chow is performing a delicate cyst removal surgery on Panda without knowing which organ it's attached to. Most likely we need to extend the incision, the opening wider, so we can gently remove the cyst without accidentally rupturing it. It bursts inside the abdomen, it can cause a widespread infection. And then we'll slowly dissect to see which organ is it exactly connected to. Oh. So it sort of popped out. It's as big as it is on x-ray. Based on what it looks like now, it feels to the liver, trying to see where it starts and ends. Hopefully it's not connected to the gallbladder. There'll be a different problem. If the cyst is also connected to the gallbladder, the operation would be more challenging. One wrong cut and bile fluids could leak into the body. Oh man. Yeah, there you go. So the cyst is connected to both the gallbladder and the liver, so we need to carefully dissect the cyst from both. Trying to do this without injuring the gallbladder. That's the difficulty. The cyst is coming out now. Okay. The cyst has been successfully removed. With the entire cyst removed, cells from the lining of the cyst can then be analysed. This method will yield more accurate results compared to a fine needle biopsy. And now we'll feel much better now without the cyst compressing on all her organs. Once the biopsy report comes back, we have a better idea why the cyst grew in the first place and then it will give us a better idea what to do if the cyst ever goes back. I feel very relieved. First time I saw the cyst, I was very shocking because I didn't expect it to be so big. I cannot imagine that such a big balloon that stuck inside the panda's tummy. I don't know how long it was. I'm hoping that the reports comes out right. Uh, it's not a, a major problem like cancerous. Yeah, panda, go home. Go home. 
and more good news as Dr. Chow has found someone to adopt Penyet. Hi. He is still a little bit of an introvert. He's still not enough socialization at this moment in time, but he does warm up to people. I think he's the one. He's very affectionate. Meanwhile, I'm looking at Princess Sample under the microscope. It's a benign lump that will not spread to other parts of her body. Excellent. 13-year-old Golden Retriever Princess tested negative for cancer. Shall we go for a walk? No. OK, let's go. Come. Her mobility has also improved after weekly joint injections for her osteoarthritis. So hopefully she continues to live another um, good five years. Yeah, hopefully we maintain her quality of life. And Taco is on his way to full recovery. So the good news is that Taco seems to have pooped this part, this string in its entirety. Yeah. The other poops after this were stringless. Okay. So for now at least, it does seem that this main string has come out. As for Panda... Panda's biopsy result just came back. The diagnosis is a liver birth defect, which is constantly accumulating fluid. We managed to remove the birth defect completely, so the surgery is considered a success. Like Panda, when the cyst was so big and pressing on her stomach, and then it was like so uncomfortable, she couldn't walk. And then immediately after the surgery, she just had this relief. So it's like almost like a different cat. I do recognize that it is a privilege where I found something that I really love to do. I wake up every day, and I, I have a skill that can directly impact the lives of others. That was when I really felt that, that all the struggles that we had until that point, uh, they were all worth it. Hi, darling. It's okay. I know. Being a vet is not easy, but it's just that love and that passion that we have for wanting the best for animals that keeps us going day to day. And even till today, I can tell you, I enjoy my job so much, so much. Good boy, aren't you? Good boy, aren't you? Some people ask me what mottos do I have. One of the ones that do follow me uh, is actually a saying, but what that means essentially is that uh, if you're going to do it, do it to the best of your abilities. If you have had a problematic animal, they are sick, and you manage to try to work through the problem properly, and they eventually start to perk up and be happy and bright again with the owner, that makes things worthwhile.